All right, this is Balance of Power Round 1, Akiyama vs. Reaminator. Now, apparently some people don't really have the cards to play this set that well, so Akiyama, for instance, if we check his account, um, you know, he's played about 200 games, a little under. It's hard to have a lot of card selection, and so it might be hard to build a balanced hand, and that could be some of the reason we see some weird hand choices. Now we also have the choice of which three cards are visible and which three are hidden. I should uh, actually check the rule set this time. Incidentally, this is a, a really big round one matchup. Obviously, I have, you know, Akiyama in the top 15 players of all time, and Ray Emanator has been really strong since his return. Winner of this has to face Vid, which is obviously tough too, and loser might have to face Addy, which is just a really tough part of the bracket. But I can actually, I can check the rules this time. I really should have done that last time. Incidentally, three blocks is generally thought to favor first turn. Um, and I'm not supposed to say the strategy stuff Turds has been sending me about TTN, because it's top secret and he thinks he's ahead of the field. But I can say, I think, well, maybe I can't, but I will say, I think turds would go in one or nine here on first turn. That's that's the advanced turds move. All right. Must use at least two level threes, no seven seven fours, max of two cards with double numbers on it. Okay. So both players have, I think, smartly hid their level threes, right? Both players have those, or shown their level threes and hid some of their level fives. Ray starts in seven, and we get an instant move in response. Plus wall is on, so I wouldn't think Ponita is necessarily safe. But um, if we think about the move in seven, Ray is saying, if you go in four, I can take it, and if you go in three, you give me four. Akiyama is now saying, if you ever go in 12 or 16, I get the other one. And I'm happy with that. Hmm. Again, based on top secret tech, I think uh, Ray should go in five. <laughs> if that top secret tech is in fact correct, and I may not be understanding it correctly. I think you want to use one of the 2366 or the 7352. Probably the 2366 is the better fit in five so that's one idea you could also go in two and say if you ever go in three or four i go in the other one but you really need a good response to one there if you don't have good control of one that's going to be really uncomfortable you could also play on the diagonal if there's you know something nice that fits in ten specifically if two three six six or seven three five two fits in ten setting you up in Oh, I'm so bad at saying the numbers quickly. 14. It's just not intuitive at all for me what number's what. Because, you know, the number that's 10 here I'm used to thinking of as 8. And it is hard for me to make the adjustment. And the square below 8 should be 11, not 14. Right? But okay. If we think about this. Rei has first turn. And he has five cards remaining. And Akiyama is going to play four more cards. So nine more cards are going to be played. And Rei is going to have last turn. That means if Rei avoids 12 and 16, then he does get the last played card there, right? He's going to get to respond there. The board won't fill up such that he has to play there first. Similarly, if he plays in two, he's going to have last dibs on plays in three and four. And in fact, he will have last dibs on both those pairs of squares. Akiyama will have to play at some point with his last card in one of those pairs, or earlier, and Rei will get to reply in the other of those paired squares. And so you have a situation where he can guarantee each time he builds a pair, because there are three blocks. Um, this is specifically a feature of three blocks. Oh, interesting. What happened? I think Rei went in two, splitting the pair. Akiyama must have blocked four. And Rei 
didn't have a good card to put there because he was potentially weak to combos from one, so he had to use the bomb there. So because Akiyama used this combo threat, however, we also did get we also got a visible uh, a hidden hand out of Rei's hand. Well, Akiyama has not yet had to use a hidden card. So in some ways, this is good for Rei. You know, the score is six six, but he has two cards safe to Akiyama's one. Locked in cards doesn't matter, in my opinion, as much in TTN as it does in TTA. So because the score is 6-6, six, six, like if Akiyama has a play in 1 here, which he presumably does, and it will lock in 2, I think he likely is in pretty solid shape to tie. But we can see what Rei was trying to do with the presumed move in 2. He, he must have played 2. There's no way this... No, he could have played 3. He could have played the bomb in 3, Akiyama took the free square in 4, and then Rei played in 2 with a 7 out. Then we wouldn't know if Akiyama has the capture. Ah, that's probably how it happened, was Rei wanted to lock in 7. I didn't really consider going in 3, but with Charmeleon 7 facing out, if Akiyama doesn't have that capture, this is very good for Rei. And if he does have that capture, it's not necessarily so bad. He does not. Okay. So I, I think the order was 3-4-2, not 2-4-3. I got overthinking about 2-4-3 because that was the move order I was thinking about, but I think the 3-4-2 move order makes more sense. And I think if if Rei had started in 2, Akiyama doesn't go in 4 unless he has 1. So it can't be that order. It must be Rei played 3 to block in the card in 7, Akiyama took the free square in 4, and Rei was ready to lock in both of his cards with Charmeleon with a 7 facing out. I was thinking, Dalimar, I should have said, but Dalimar played the 6753 and the 6763. These seem to be regularly available cards people have. This might just be coincidence. But running one doesn't mean not running the other. Now, note Akiyama does not have the lock in with 6632. That is potentially comboed back. 5761 is not potentially comboed back, though, and 7352 has no captures. So the score is 6-6. Six, six. If Psyduck goes somewhere and Rei has any captures on board, then he's going to have at least a tie, right? Because they can't capture Psyduck while blocking in his capture unless his only capture, say he goes in 10, if his only capture is in 14, then it doesn't quite work. But as long as Rei has a capture here with his hidden card, He's playing for at least a tie here. However, it's not obvious he does. It's actually quite hard to have captures here if your plus walls don't line up, just given where the elements are, right? That 5761 is very susceptible to plus walls, but again, if you don't have the plus wall, you know, Psyduck doesn't have the capture in the square below it, right? Ponita has a 7 facing one way and a 5 facing the other, but that's next to an elemental. You need a 7 left to have the capture there. Huh. What happened? Alright, so Rei had, I think, 2576 as his last card. And if that's your last card, then you don't have any captures. So instead, he played Psyduck in a square where if it was captured, 2576 had a reply. Akiyama took, because you have to take, you can't just leave stuff open, and Rei had the take back. So actually, it was kind of a dangerous situation at the end for Rei. That's quite interesting. And we get a tie in game one. I think this is a disaster for Akiyama, because if he didn't have that many cards, He's now going to be playing basically open in the second game. Um, yeah, so Ray wanted a Pikachu hand, but it didn't fit. I don't know what the Pikachu card is, so... Oh, 6632, of course. Yeah, 6632 would have been incredible at the end here, right? 6632 would have given you captures on both Ponita and 5761. I think they handled this endgame well. 
I think Akiyama did a really good job of just saying, you have to take high numbers. I'm going to give you tough stuff to take. If you keep taking it, so be it. But I'm just going to make sure you have difficult things to capture. I think this was well defended. Again, second turn is really difficult in a three-block game. I'm curious what would have happened if Rey had followed the trademarked turd strategy, you know, instead of on turn two going in three, maybe going in, why are you doing this to me, Discord? Maybe going in five or in, what was the other square I thought about? If it was nine, that's stupid. Maybe it was nine then. Oh, it was nine at the start and then five later. Anyways, ignore me. Um, let's get back to the game. And see if they're playing again. Uh, yeah. Akiyama says, now comes the real problem, changing hands. So, yeah, this is sometimes a tough situation. What you really want to do is any cards you can switch out you make sure the switched cards are in your hidden cards, right? That's, you know, very obvious. This is not deep insight, but you got to make sure they're predicting at the end the cards they've seen before. Because you don't want to let them just play it freely. And if you can switch a few cards and play, you know, your three visible cards first, then you're probably doing okay, right? Because even if you, you know, had to repeat one of the three, or maybe even two of the three hidden cards. They don't know which ones, uh, and there's at least one or two cards in there they don't expect. I think you can probably survive there. But also, I tell this story too often, but I don't think it's been for a while. And um, when I was playing, I think it was for the site championship title match against Great Sephiroth. I think that's what it was. It's possible it was in TTAC proper, but I think it was a title match. I think he won TTAC the year after I did. Is that right? I think so. And in the title match, there was, um, I believe, an open slash closed game, though it could have been closed. Okay. Rey has first turn again, but on a four-block board. Four-block boards is generally thought to be one of the best constructions for second turn. We see three cards from both that we've seen in the previous game. You really want to have control of 9 and 14 here. But before we get to that, let's, let's finish my quick story. And Great Sephiroth played a hand. And then the next game... He played the same hand, but switched out one card. Um, I think it was a kind of low-level game, so there were a lot of like 7-6-3-2s, 7-6-4-3s. It, it might have been split levels, some 6-6-3-2s, six, six, cards like that. And one game he used like a 6-6-3-2, six, six, and the next game he used a 6-3-6-2. Six, six, there was some switch like that. And in, it might have been the third game, it might have been the fourth or fifth, but it was pretty clear he was basically using the same hand, but switching one card some of the games. Like, maybe he switches this game, maybe he stays a game, then switches the next. And he was usually playing it in such a way that he would hold on to that card until the end game. Uh, incidentally, one difficulty here is it's possible you want Psyduck to control 9, in which case it's hard to use Psyduck first, but Psyduck is kind of the worst card and you want it out of your hand. Um, and yeah, I'm really not sure where Ray should start. I think 6632 in 14 is a big gamble, and maybe you can just take it, but it seems a bit scary. You know, they need to be able to combo a 6 to capture it, right? Ponita could take a 7 there, but not a 6. Uh, they need to be able to plus wall, I mean, or have a plus 1 from Elemental, but that's pretty unlikely. Anyhow, so he was switching cards, and I didn't know which he was using um, in this critical game, but I could set up a formation. I could set up either a Z or a Q, 
And I thought against one of those cards, let's say the 6632, that the Q was going to win. And I thought against the other, or probably the other way around, 6632, say the Z wins, and 6362, the Q wins. And I was pretty sure it would win based on I knew what one of his remaining cards would be and not the other. And I checked the lines and, you know, one of my formations won against one of them, one won against the other. And I had to make a guess. And I thought about how he had played the game to this point, And I evaluated which card I thought he was more likely to have. And I made the right pick. And it's, you know, the best closed decision I've ever made. Uh, which maybe you could say doesn't have that much competition. Okay. Ray does go for Pikachu in 14. I think this makes a lot of sense as a gamble. Again, they need the exact plus wall. If we think about cards Akiyama used last game, 5761 does not cover this. What else did we see last game? Um, we saw the 7635, we saw Ponita, we saw Pikachu. We didn't see one of his cards. One of his cards was unplayed. And we saw something like a 4376, which also wouldn't flip this. I think that was the other card we saw. So none of the five cards we saw can capture this Pikachu, but there is a sixth hidden card and there may have been switches. So I think this is a good gamble from Raminator. Now, if you're Akiyama, you don't have a chance to make the same gamble with 7635 in either 9 or 15 if you don't hit the capture, because 7352 captures back. And if you put anything weaker facing out, 2576 has the capture, and you probably don't have combos back there, but you might. Um, if that's the case, you could play something like Pikachu in 15, with the point that 2576 in 11 can be met by a combo back maybe in 12, because uh, you have two different walls you could use to plus wall the 5. But I, th I think this is a good starter. Uh, obviously, if you have the plus wall, you take it. But it's, it's really hard for Akiyama to have the plus wall here. We've seen so many of his cards that he has, I think, quite limited tools remaining. Um, Rei also points out he had a lot of safe starters if Akiyama hasn't changed. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that would be, so I'm assuming... That is a comment on Ray's hidden cards. Okay, there's also a Solder Cloaked One match happening in a moment. I'm going to try to catch as much of Balance of Power as I can, because I really haven't given TTN sufficient coverage, and I would like to. Now, I think you probably want to just take this. I think you want to take this. The problem with four blocks on the board is often that the way it runs out, the kind of paired squares start favoring second turn rather than first turn. But if all the cards just play out in a big clump, that doesn't matter. First turn, we'll get the last attack at the clump. Uh, you also want to get rid of a visible card. You know, the kind of obvious ways to do so are like Psyduck and 15, but you really don't need to block that in. Pikachu is doing great on its own. There's not another obvious use for Psyduck. Akiyama threatens to go in in 5. Now, actually, there's an interesting question. Let's say you had something like 6762. Okay, he does go Psyduck in 15. That surprises me. He could be right and I could be wrong, of course. Um, but I would... And I, I understand using your level threes, and I understand Psyduck will suck facing the game. Maybe he's right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That, make, that does make sense. But I think now if Akiyama plays in 11 capturing that, then Rei probably goes in eight. But 2576 is going to be really good facing the game, but you also don't want a predictable final card because your opponent can optimized decisions around it, of course. So... No. Alright, Akiyama does block in, and now 2576 doesn't have an obvious square. You know, 7635 is pretty good. Uh, if Rei has 6763 in his hand again, 
which I would guess he does. It's just a very powerful card. Um, that could, of course, land in 1. You might want to block in in 11. I think I do prefer capturing last turn in, in 5. I know Psyduck sucks, but I, I think I prefer the capture. Both players have used two of their visible cards. Uh, so one thing to do is Rei could go in two with a setup type option. It's hard for Akiyama to play safely in one after that. If you have the same card set up both ways, remember you need plus, not same. Um, this came up in the Vialva game. We can check the rules. It is plus, not same. So it's a little harder to have a setup, and if you do, it often isn't with one card both ways. So I think two is not as promising as you might think. I think the standard things to do here, I think, are 1 and 11. And again, I do think you want a cluster of cards. You don't want the board split up into pairs because you're going to be the one that ends up having to play first in the paired squares. So I think, I think 1 or 11. I think you build a cluster. Now, one, there's a decent chance you get comboed back from uh, six if you play six, seven, six, three. So you need a recapture there. You probably don't have that, to be honest. So maybe you can't go one, in which case, this is not a very pleasant position, actually. Um, I think Akiyama has neutralized this quite well. And I really like moves like the move in five that play against the visible cards, right? If you can get Rei to hold on to 2, 5, 7, 6, you can probably dodge it on final turn. TTN dodging a specific card, to me, at least seems quite doable. So, if you can just keep giving 2, 5, 7, 6 no squares without conceding too much else, you're probably in really good shape. Alright, Rei plays Charmeleon again, that's his flip, and Ponita captures it. And we still have the 2576 in our hand. So the question is, what do you play in 6? I think you're going to play 6. Let's assume you don't have a combo. Do you play 2576? Or do you play something else like 6763 that has the capture? And I think you play 2576 because I think at this point, the response is likely to be in 3 anyway. And... Maybe not. Maybe they only play in three if you've captured. This is tough, and if Ray's remaining cards are like 6753 and 6763, the two cards that filled out his hand last time, um, that's going to be a little different because he didn't run Pikachu last time, I don't think. But I think I'd play 2576 and 6. Again, I don't know his cards, but I would be looking to get it out of my hand. I will say part of the reason I'm talking mostly from Ray's perspective is, you know, pals and whatnot. But I think part of the reason is also Akiyama plays so quickly on his moves that it's hard to spend much time thinking from his perspective. You know, I reload and the next two cards have already been played. So that makes it harder to take his, his perspective on in a match. cool to have two uh, big tournaments going at once. I totally forgot about the uh, the max of two cards that have a pair of the same numbers. Um, so we know both of them have used one of those pairs, the 6632, but I have no idea how frequent these pairs are. We haven't seen any 7s. Oh, we've seen 177. Seven. Akiyama's played 7371. So actually, if Rei A plays 2, 5, 7, 6, and 6, you have to predict 7, 3, 7, 1, or 7, 1, 7, 3. It doesn't matter which it is in 3. And if you don't have a good reply there, you're in trouble. However, if you do take the card in 2, then the 7, 7 does not have a good square to go. So maybe that's reason to really think about taking it. There's also, of course, 2, 5, 7, 6, and 3. But this is a really big concession if if they have six. It's just pretty scary to play if they have six. 
an interesting move is, especially if Ray has six, seven, six, three. I kind of like the idea of two, five, seven, six in seven, because six, seven, six, three has such a nice plus in three, and it has the double capture in six. So if Ray has 6763, I quite like 2576 in, uh, in 7. Um, I think that's a reasonable idea. The one problem is... It might turn out you give them uh, 11, and if you give them 11 at the end, you might not have captures back. But I, I do kind of like the idea of 2, 5, 7, 6, and 7. But you can see how the paired squares are going um, to play out there, right? Because say you go in 7 and Akiyama goes in 11, there are two paired squares, and Rei has to occupy one in the pair first before Akiyama gets to respond. And you always want to be the second actor in those situations. It's like playing in position in poker is if you're the second actor, and it's even a bigger advantage here, um, you know, things go well. That was not very well put, but uh, hopefully makes sense. All right, Rei goes for the move in three. Now, if Rei has 6763 or 6753 in his hand at this point, I think he's in a ton of trouble. Those are very likely to be dead cards. So I think we have to assume he doesn't have those in his hand. If he had 6763, and why would you? Oh, 6763 has a double number. So there is reason to drop 6763 before 6753. But I think 6763 is the more likely card anyway. And if you have it, I don't think you should go in three here. So I'm going to assume Rei has neither of those cards this game. And the big question is does Akiyama have six? And if he does, he's probably already played it because he plays quickly. He sort of has six. It's possible he played five without the recaptures. Not clear, though, um, because he could have had the capture, but it didn't capture back Ponita. Sevens are tough to take. Um, I think Akiyama's probably in the slightly better position now. If Rei has seven, then he goes up seven five and is like guaranteed at least a tie. Probably wins, actually. But... If he doesn't have seven, and double numbers are hard to have, right? I don't think he has six, seven, six, three this game, but you're only allowed one double number. He's already used one of them. What are the odds his second number is exactly, double number is exactly up left? Because if it isn't, this is safe. All right. Ray plays Ivysaur. That is a card unlikely but possible to give a plus in 11. And. You have to hope he has captures back here if you're if you're rooting for him. Uh, six seven six three here has a mm, six seven six three here is pretty good because it can capture anything that could land in either eight or eleven due to the elements and potential pluses. So six seven six three is a pretty plausible last card here. Um, Ray is thinking he is the 7x, 7x. He also forgot which was the 3 and which was the 1, but it doesn't matter. And the 4, 3, 7, 6 left, which if so... And Ray does have Tauros, which if so, he has both of them covered. Yes. Is that true? Ooh, it depends on if it's 7, 1, 7, 3, or 7, 3, 7, 1. Because if it's 7, 3, 7, 1, then 7, 3, 7, 1 in 8 ties. If it's 7, 1, 7, 3... Then it doesn't. It was four three seven six. Ah, it doesn't combo because of the element. I thought it comboed too. Yeah. Um, oh no, he didn't think it comboed. I thought it comboed. Um, 
I thought against those two cards, this was winning. But of course, the 4376 gets a six down. So even if it's plussed, it doesn't flip extra cards. All right, I would say. Hmm. It's tough with Ivysaur. I think there was a case for going 2, 5, 7, 6, and 7 instead of 3. But the, the, the pairings work against you, and Ivysaur is pretty awful in all the remaining squares, so I guess that didn't make sense. With the huge left weakness and the game going left, if you went in 11, you kind of had to use Ivysaur, 6, 5, 7, 2, and there was a good chance Taurus is dead. Okay, that was a pretty difficult situation for him. I'm not not sure what the best move was. And uh, we'll stop here.